Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us for today's webinar. For those of you within North America, thank you for joining us so early in your day. Uh, and for those of you in our overseas markets, uh, yes, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day you're at. Uh, we are going to be tackling geometric road design using RoadEng today. Uh, so we do say this is kind of a bit of an introductory webinar, but we're going to cover a lot of ground and a lot of concepts. So even if you are an experienced RoadEng user, it's still totally applicable. Uh, we are going to be going to demonstrate how to uh, set up a terrain model. Uh, and I'll just move over here to our actual concepts page. Uh, with that terrain model, it's going to be based off of two different types of data. So we are going to be working with both LiDAR data and total station data and showing you how to import those two different data types and then merge them together. We are going to throw in a background ortho photo as well, uh, move over and tackle alignment design. And this is really what RoadEng is specialized in doing. Um, it's, uh, yeah, about setting up our horizontal and vertical alignments. Uh, we're going to customize our cross-section template assign that template to different ranges um, and if you've got multiple templates uh, yeah show you how to how to assign those to different parts of your design balancing our mass hall and then create an output sheet uh, and that's what we call in our software we call it multi-plot so that's kind of our brief agenda. Um, if you have any questions, uh, we do like to keep these webinars pretty casual. Uh, just, yeah, open up. I think you have to expand your GoToWebinar panel. Type your questions in. We, if we've got a moment during the demo, we might even stop and address it. If not, we'll tackle them at the end. Um, yeah, and that's kind of our quick introduction. Uh, the software itself, if you're not familiar with it, it is modular. So we are going to be working in the terrain module and the location module today. Terrain is where we do our, like create our DTM, as far as the same place we can do site design. The location module is really specialized for corridor design. And then we have an extra module called survey map, uh, and that's for field data collection, and we'll not be using that one. Uh, in terms of compatibility, just like to throw this up here because it's important, but uh, yeah, we read and write a whole bunch of different industry standard formats. And with that, I think it's time to pass it over to Matt, who's going to be doing our demo today. All right. Thanks, Aaron. And let's, I think we're, we're good to go. Um, so starting out today, I'm just going to kind of show the, uh, what we're going to work towards uh, first. So more of the finished product, and then we'll jump right into the start and uh, show how we got here. So here we're looking at the multi-plot page. Um, we can see our alignment in the plan. We've got our profile view down here. We've got our mass hall diagram. Uh, uh, we've got a few tables. So we've got earthwork summary tables, culvert summary tables. Uh, these are all customized. So we can change what columns are going in there. Uh, we can change the frequency for the rows, all different report points. Uh, for example, my volume being summarized in 100 meter intervals, uh, whereas with our culverts, we don't really care about summarizing that in 100 meter intervals, but we want to summarize our culverts at the culvert insertion points. Um, yeah, so we've got our plan profile. Uh, these multi-plots are organized uh, as a workbook. So in the workbook, we have chapters. So we're looking at the plan profile chapter. Also got a second chapter here for my cross sections. Um, so different pages, different questions. Uh, we've got this section where we've got a, uh, a large fill for that. I want a little more detail and I've made a second chapter with my cross section shown zoomed out and uh, at uh, more frequent. Um, so these workbooks, they can be saved as their own file. They are book layout, save book layout. You can pull them in if you're working on another design and you want to use the same uh, multi-plot layout. Uh, same for the chapters. So workbook layout's nice if you're using the same chapters over and over again. Uh, if you have something a little different and you want to uh, capture the individual chapters, we can uh, save your chapter, add new chapter. So these are the ones saved on my desktop. And if you're just starting out with the software and want to bring in a, uh, a worksheet that's already been configured or a chapter that's already been configured, we have this web library as well. So we can grab in Default for the web library. And all the subviews and whatnot, they're all customizable. 
change the company name, move things around. Um, just like the data table, oops, we can oops, choose what points are shown in our cross-section view. So really flexible, really easy to uh, quickly push out a design. Now, this uh, multi-plot is referencing our actual design. So the bulk of our design is completed in these other views. So I've got my profile set up here. So this is where I'm actually moving my alignment around. I've got my plan view over here, cross-section view, and a 3D view. I don't really use the 3D view much except for uh, placing my culverts and uh, uh, looking for something that may be off. So kind of a final check. Um, but it's up to the user. It's really flexible and can be customized a bunch of different ways. So that's kind of a, uh, a flyover of where we're going with this. And uh, I guess the next step is to just start from scratch and get going. So we're going to introduce the software's module. We've got uh, uh, three modules. Uh, we're not going to deal with survey uh, today. We've got the train module and the location module. Um, so we're going to build our topo surface and terrain. And for this example, as introduced, we're going to deal with two different data sets. Uh, we're dealing with uh, DEM based on LiDAR data, and we're dealing with total station data. Um, we could uh, build those all in the same file, except for the total station data that I've got has a uh, stream profile in it that has a, a follow egg, so stream bottom, and then we'll end up with some funny lines. Uh, so I'm going to build them in two separate files, and I'm going to merge them together. So let's start off by jumping into terrain. And for this, I'm going to start out by grabbing doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, KMZ showing the alignment, uh, a preliminary alignment. Um, so the reason I'm doing this is just with the LiDAR data, it's nice to uh, thin our data down. So if we're a long ways from anything that we care about, I don't necessarily need the LiDAR points for that. So I'm going to bring that in. Uh, it's KMZ, so it's, um, it's going to be in lat long, but I don't want to work in lat long. I want to work in UTM zone 20. And it's metric data. And I want to work in metric units. So there's our preliminary alignment. Now I'm going to add in our LiDAR data. So we've got our two DEMs here. Oops. Uh, the import options here, I'm asked whether I want to display my points. LiDAR data, usually you don't. We'll be able to see where all the points are when we uh, bring them in, because they'll all be selected. But once we uh, deselect them, um, they'll go away. They're still in the model. They're just not being displayed. Uh, selection, so I want to select my data based off a corridor. So we've got our preliminary alignment there. I want my corridor width to be 300 meters. And that's entirely project dependent. Um, so it's uh, up to you how wide you go. And then the areas outside of that corridor I can choose to dumb down my data. So this would be read in 19, or, uh, skip 19 points, read in one, uh, skip nine points, read in one. Uh, but I don't care about the data at all outside of that. So I'm just going to skip all. The projection, our uh, projection is uh, UTM zone 20, and it's going to UTM zone 20. So if this was another. Uh, coordinate system using another set of units, the transformation would automatically happen to uh, work in the uh, projection we've assigned for the project. So that's going to take a moment to import. Well, it does. Let's open up another instance of terrain. So in here, let's grab our total station data. So for this, um, it's uh, CSV or ASCII, I forgot to look at the extension, but CSV, ASCII, text, they're all pretty well the same. Um, 
and I've got an IOP file configured to match the survey standards that are used here. So this is just going to automatically connect our brake lines, connect linear features, uh, treat points the way we want points treated, and uh, assign different symbols for those points uh, depending on the feature name. So here, our structure, we've got our X column is the second column, our Y column is the third column, our elevation data is fourth column, point number is the first column, point code is fifth. How those codes are read in are uh, defined in here. So here I've got CL, anything that starts with a CL, and then this asterisk is a wildcard character. So CL1 will be read in and it'll be connected adjacent in the order that they're surveyed. Um, they're going to have this red line type color, dashed symbol, or a dashed line type. Uh, the symbol is going to be a triangle. They are going to be break lines. And if we have a CL2, since we've got this wildcard character in there, it's going to separate the two different CLs. Uh, accordingly. Uh, same for my road edges, uh, same with brake lines. We've got our ground points here, um, so they are just going to be read in as points and they're going to get a cross symbol. We can test them, make sure everything's being read in properly, and uh, we could do a selection here to turn the data down, but you would almost never do that with uh, total station data, so we're not going to. Um, Projection for this, we want to work in the same units as uh, other projects, so UTM Zone 20, and uh, it's the project's undefined uh, right now. If we wanted to, we could say that's the same thing because that's what it's surveyed in. Uh, you'd use this from file if you, say, surveyed in a state plane and wanted to go to UTM or, or vice versa, but since it's undefined and all, already in the coordinate system we want to use, we're good to go there. So there's our survey data, like we said, we've got our center line one brought in as one line, center line two brought in as another line, we've got our road edges, uh, we've got uh, HW, so I water one, I water two, etc. So this is handling generate, and we'll make uh, we'll leave the contours off for now. We'll click our three D view, and there, look at that! Isn't that nice? So we've got a surface for our total station data that we can work with now. Um, let's just jump back to this. I'm going to save this. So save as. Let's call it TS. So we're not going to work in this much beyond the step. Um, but before we leave this terrain, I want to download a image to work with in the background. So since we're using um, projected data, we can click import. We've got our line showing up that's selected. And I can choose what area that I want to download. So we can also choose between different sources. That looks good to me. Let's just grab that chunk of imagery. So if I didn't use crop and just hit save, it would grab the entire extents that's shown. And we will download that. So that is getting downloaded off the web. Uh, then it'll be stitched together and it will come in as a separate train file. Now over here, we've got our LiDAR data, uh, I'm just going to move this out of the way. Our LiDAR data is there. When it first got brought in, we can see all the points. So I just hit Control A to select all. Um, and then to not see them, I've clicked off to the side. Um, so we're pretty good here. We can, okay. Happy with that. We'll save this. And let's save it as topo. Now over in our other file, we're being prompted to save that image that we've just downloaded. So we'll save it as image. 
turn up the resolution. And we've got an ortho image for our background. So that ortho image, if I click it, I can't select it. That's because it is a separate terrain file and it's being referenced as in the background. So I can right click our plan view, go to backgrounds and there it is. Here I can control how much washout appears, um, whether it's displayed, etc. I can also open the file and change the actual file itself. Uh, so that premise works for other uh, data sets as well. So if you had your own high-res ortho imagery, you could just insert it into a train file as a uh, image and save that train file. Um, you can also use uh, train files as layers to control uh, line work that you might not necessarily need in your topo surface, but you might want to reference for your, uh, your own knowledge when you're designing. So property lines would be a common one. So let's jump back to this. So we've got our LiDAR data in there. Now I want to merge our total station data into LiDAR data. So I've clicked Terrain Modeling, Merge Terrain, and let's grab our PS file. And in Options, um, this is kind of just a, a detail. I don't want to have break lines around the outside of that surface. Uh, just because I want there to be an uh, interpolation between the LiDAR points and the break lines. So kind of softening the, the edges there. We'll hit OK. We'll hit OK. We'll hit OK. There's our TS data. Now I want to generate a surface. So for this, I'm going to want to make my contours. We don't need contours to uh, complete our design. Oh, and I forgot to do something. This KMZ is, I'm just looking at the properties over here, and uh, if we wanted to, we could change the symbols and whatnot for it. But the thing that's important for this step is that it's being modeled, and we don't want to include that in our model because, as we can see here, the elevation data for those points is set at zero. So let's turn modeled off so we don't get a bunch of holes in our tin. Now we're good to model. We'll create our contours. So I'm doing my contours in 10 meter intervals and 2 meter intervals. We'll hit OK. And it's created the 3D surface. Now it's creating the contours. Uh, creating the surface is quicker than creating the contours, but the uh, uh, it's not unbearable by any means. There we go. So we've got our data. Now just as a quick check before we go on to designing with it. I like the, uh, the 3D view for my checks. Looks good. And there we can see that unmodeled KMZ in the bottom. So if we left that modeled, there'd be little uh, cones going down to uh, model that as part of the surface wherever there's a, a node. And there's our survey data, and it matches up pretty well. Cool. So we'll hit save. And at this point, we are done using terrain for today's webinar. So I'll just minimize that, and we'll jump over to location. So in location, we want to create a new file. We're going to reference the surface that we've just created. So, uh, da, 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 da. so referencing topo. Uh, if we had a land XML, we could also reference land XML rather than train surface. Um, and here we're presented with the option to either uh, create our initial alignment based off of an existing feature. So here we could use that and go down to our uh, layer. So reference to KMZ and each node would uh, be a duplicate of that feature, but let's just do center of terrain. So there we are. And that center of terrain, there must have been a straight point off there, but our first initial point for the alignment is over here, and I want to move that to our surface, so I click in our plan view, 
right click added IP and I've got a pencil cursor showing up and then we go over the uh, initial IP it changes to a box once we get within the snapping tolerance I click once to unanchor it oh. quick once to unanchor it and then I just pull it over to wherever we want to start a road so there we go we've got it set on our surface now now I'm just going to really quickly rough something in here and it's nice to see what's going on so we've got the contours associated with our topo but I'm going to add in our background image as well so I right clicked plan window options and let's reference that image and there's a draw order so we want that at the top so we can still see our contours there's that and let's just rough this in so we're straightening out an existing road And that's good. It's lining up fairly well. Let's move that over a smidge. And that's taking a little while to calculate. And let's just see why that's doing that. It's going to change our report points to be every 10 meters and 100 for our auto intervals. And let's add on the last tangent. So our profile wasn't updating, and that's just because it's not zoomed to the extents. As I click that in, um, we can see a draped line for our topo surface. Now we're running out of contour um, train model, so we can cheat there a little bit by uh, going into properties and we can extend the ground. Or we can just lop it off a little bit further back. So there's that. Now we can go through and we can quickly add in our profile. But as we do this, um, I usually watch my mass hall diagram to get a, a decent balance to minimize my cuts and fills. And it's worth noting that our volumes are greatly influenced by what we have going on for our cross-section geometry. So if we want to change our cross-section geometry, we can and we do that in the template editor and this one I've got the default roads assigned here and let's just look at this and okay it's got the width that I'd like um, the general shape that we'd like we can go through it's basically a fillable form to uh, get the geometry that we're looking for and we'll add something in a little bit more complex here in a moment so I'm happy with that we'll click something in really quick now I've got a big hole in my tin here and the reason for that is my alignments off the surface so for that I'm going to start adding in my curves so let's click there now here we get to uh, choose our curves so if I left this as uh, radius auto um, use minimum radius so my design speed for the road is set as uh, 80 kilometers an hour so it's pulling up the uh, associated radius for that we can turn that off and we can make this whatever we like so I want to go with a thousand meter curve there uh, we'll make it a spiral curve um, and it's going to be super elevated as well so we'll hit OK or apply And we'll zoom to extents here. And now that alignment's back to where it should be. Now we'll go to the next IP. And same thing, I want to use a spiral curve. And 
I'm getting a spiral transition angles greater than uh, reduced length over increase r, so let's just increase the r value. And there's that. So things are looking pretty good. Now I want to keep continuing on with uh, designing my vertical. So for me, I'm constantly watching uh, my mass hall and uh, other factors that I'll be looking at. I'm going to turn off this lock so we can see the grades. So let's see if we can get a decent grade coming into this crossing. So I am content with the grade, but not content with the mass deficit that I'm running for material. So that's saying that we've got approximately deficit of approximately 85,000 cubic meters. So for our subgrade construction, so I'm just going to drop the grade in a few spots to get us uh, some cut material. And let's scoop this back here. And then we've got this big hole. Let's push back into that. Now, I'm going to start adding in vertical curves, so let's go with this. Here I've got uh, the design speed set at 80 again, and uh, we can calculate our K value and length based on uh, line of sight. Uh, calculations happening in the background. If you hit F1, you can go to the help and it will give you the actual formula. Let's just apply that and see how it looks. Pretty good, but still got a pretty decent deficit. We'll add in a few more. Let's drop this guy down here. Still running a bit of a deficit. Looking pretty good and the curve is basically non-existent so I'm just going to hit delete. On the IP that deletes the curves on either side. The IPs stay there on the either, either side, but I'm just going to reassign those. All right, so that's that, and I think we're getting within the realm of reason reasonability for the uh, mass hall. Yeah, we've got a surplus that's only three or yeah three thousand. So I'm content with that. I wanted to stay below eight percent for my grade. All right, so let's make this a little bit more real as we go here. So now, just looking at this, that's a pretty big fill. Um, Let's go back to our cross-section geometry. So here, let's see what I've got configured for this. So I've got my uh, fill slope set at 2 to 1. So that's a bit steep. Should have done this first. I meant to do this first. 
let's set that down to be three to one just so it's uh, recoverable. And same with our base slope, and then we'll set that slope to be three to one as well. So this is going to recalculate. Now, just looking at this, I know I'm going to want something different than this default template in that big fill section. Um, so for me, I'm familiar with the area, I think we can get away with having a steeper uh, fill slope angle, but uh, then we're getting away with a um, away from a recoverable slope. So for that, I'm going to grab my default template, uh, copy. And I want to start by having that as uh, the basis for customizing this next template. So I'm going to rename this. And we'll just call it uh, BARR for barrier. And we'll call it rural with barrier. Now, for slopes, we'll go steep. We'll go one and a half to one. but we should have some kind of structure there to keep people on the road if they decide not to be on the road. So we'll go to their e-library and we're going to grab a template from that e-library. We won't grab all of them, we'll just do walls and barriers. And I want to use my guardrail barrier. So we'll copy that. We will paste it in here. Paste is left. It's coming up to a reasonable spot. Paste is right. And we are good to go. Now, uh, all these components, it's just basically a fillable form. Uh, I'm happy with the geometry of this one where it's placing it. Uh, we've got the post showing up to our depth. So post depth is shown right in there. So that's good. We will hit OK. Now our mass hall is going to change because I changed the fill slope angle on those uh, on the default parameter. So we'll hit OK. And let's apply that uh, that template that we've just created with the barrier. So if I want to go from station 1610, or sorry, 2610, to 2710, we will apply that. Now I'm also going to check, let's say down here, we want to start our barrier at 2880 and carry that forward to, we don't need it on both sides of the road. So we've got a fill slope over there. Let's carry that to 2930. But after that, we've got a pretty big drop on the one side of the road here too. So let's, oh, and I didn't add a curve there. Let's count for that and apply our barrier to one side of the road. So to apply those templates, assign by range, and I want to go, oops, something set on my keyboard there, uh, 2610 to 2710, and barrier. Now we'll go 2880. to 29.30. And then for where we want it just on the left side of our road, well, we can click this range to left, and we can say from 29.30, I want to keep that barrier going. That's just using the left side of that uh, template. So we'll hit OK. And there we are. 
bit of a sliver fill. We could move our alignment around. Probably should. I could move it more, or we can move it in this plane. There. So I'm pretty content with the geometry of a road at this point. We've got a bit of a surplus, but that's uh, the way she goes. Um, now, the last thing I want to do for as far as uh, the actual road design, I'm going to add in a few structures. So here we've got our crossing. I'm going to go with a large arch for this. So I'm going to go to our culvert panel. I'm going to add something in. Now, that's not a cross drain. We're going to go with a natural channel. And we are going to go with a uh, open bottom arch. And let's make oh, open bottom arch. Let's make it uh, four meters tall and twelve meters wide. So a big arch. Um, we've got that assigned there. Now we can configure things and adjust our skew and whatnot. So let's play with our skew. Go do, 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 do. try one hundred. That's looking pretty close to reasonable. Um, Let's change that to be going the right way. And let's, so I'm just playing with the gradient. Oops, minus 0.15. Let's try zero. There. So we've got it cut off. Now this is where I'll typically go to my uh, 3D view. View current point. And let's play with the options here as well. So we want to see our culverts. And there we've got our large arch poking through. Um, and the same can be done for a, a normal cross drain as well. So I won't add all of them to this just because it's kind of repetitive. Uh, but I've got my default cross drain uh, set at uh, half a meter. And that's being said, everything's just at auto. So I'm pretty happy with the way that's looking. And we could add a few more, but for the sake of uh, avoiding some repetition, we will jump to our multi-plot. So I'm happy with the design. Um, we'll go to the multi-plot, and here, as introduced, we can really streamline the process to get that output sheet. So open book layout, and I want to use this book layout. And to do... We'll get rid of that chapter. So here we've got our plan profile. It's automatically adjusting to capture the length of the road. And then we've got our cross-section geometry. Um, last thing, of course, outputs are important. We don't have an export button. File, save as, and we can change the uh, export to or save the file as whatever extension we'd like. So DWG, DXF, um, and Land XML are uh, nice if you're going to other softwares with it. Uh, for construction staking, Land XML is really nice, so you get the, the different surfaces for your different layers of material. Um, it's also nice with GPS machine controls. Um, if you want your point codes in more of a CSV format, we've got the coordinates option here. And uh, uh, many surveyed devices also recognize uh, DXF as well for line work. So that's all I've got. Um, I think we'll open it up for questions. Great. Thank you, Matt, for such a great 
presentation this morning. Um, we do have a couple questions. So the first one is, what if I don't care about super elevation? Does it need to be in there? Okay, so that's, uh, let's go back to our uh, horizontal curves panel. So if we don't care about super elevation, um, first I guess the settings that I'm using are automatically calculating that for us. So let's just click to curve. So here my super elevation is coming from a table. So select table. Um, now if we don't care about that, and as many folks don't, um, we probably don't care about a spiral curve as well. We can come in here and we can simplify the parameters for our curves. So we can just go to simple curves. We'll avoid having to deal with super elevation. Uh, spiral curves won't be an option. We'll hit OK. And we get a, a simplified uh, panel over here. And it'll still give you an option to put in super elevation, but you'd have to manually select it. Uh, so, so there, super elevation is set to six. We could just set that to zero and keep that as our default. Yeah. Excellent. And why don't we tackle one more? Because we've gone a little bit over time this morning. Uh, it's again, I think it's keeping you inside the the curve panel here. Road class specifications for my country. How do I update them? Okay. So uh, let's turn that back off. Um, so these, uh, the default parameters that come with the software um, were based on ASHTO standards. Um, so super elevation is pulling from that. Uh, the ASHTO standards were in uh, imperial units, just converted them to uh, metric units. Uh, so if you want to update these tables, um, you absolutely can, and it's really easy. You can just click open. We've got all these different tables, uh, the TBL format. Really all it is is a CSV or a text file. You can open them with, uh, uh, da, 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 which one do we want to use? Super elevation. Let's go with this one. Then uh, we can open them in Notepad. We can change the numbers to whatever we'd like hit save and that will be updated and you can also save as a, a different table and uh, refer back to it. Awesome. Very, well, very thank you Matt for tackling the presentation. Thank you to everyone who joined us this morning and for those of you watching this afterwards on YouTube. If you do have any questions, uh, feel free to always email them to us, support at softry.com. The team is happy to answer them. Everyone, hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and yeah, look forward to having you back at another webinar soon. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching another Softree webinar. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel below or tell us that you like the video. Thanks for watching.